Hi there, welcome to Create with Copper. These videos show you techniques and tutorials for making jewellery, so don't forget to subscribe for more. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make three types of links for making jewellery chain. These links can be connected together to make necklaces and bracelets as I have here. Or you could use them individually in, say, earrings or one either side of a focal necklace element. The only limit is your imagination. I've called this the twisted bar link because that's how it looks, although that's not how it's made. To make each link, all you need is some copper wire 2mm in diameter, which is 12 gauge. And to connect them together, I'm using some jump rings. And the tools needed are your wire cutters, some hammers and a block, your centre punch, a drill, file and polishing tools. For each link, I'm cutting 2cm of the wire and I want to make sure I've got a nice flush cut on either end. I'm just going to make one link here to show you. So I'm going to start with one end of the piece of wire and I'm just going to hammer it so it's flat right at the end, but tapering back up to round at the centre. It's probably useful to hammer one side for a little while and then turn it over and hammer the other side just to keep that kind of flat element central. I'm then going to turn the wire around and I want to hold it so that that flat edge I've just made is now vertical. I'm then going to hammer the other end flat in the same way, but it will be at right angles to the first end. You can keep going and make the ends as wide and flat as you want, but they need to be wide enough to fit a drill hole through them. Once I finish with my raising hammer and made the basic shapes, I then tend to switch to my planishing hammer just to make sure that all the, the hammer marks are smoothed out. And that's the basic shape made. Now I think the ends are a little bit too square at the moment, so I'm going to round them off a little bit with my file. I'm then ready to drill the holes, so first I'm going to mark where I want them to be. Then I'll use the centre punch to make a small dent, just so the drill doesn't skid across the surface. Then I can drill a hole in both ends. And the drill does leave a little bit of a burr on the underside, so I'll file that off. Now I could leave this smooth, but I'm going to texture it a little bit with my ball peen hammer. I'm just going to hammer lightly all the way over the surface on both sides. And I'm just going to polish the link up a little bit. Again, this stage is optional. The finish is okay as it is, but I just want to go for a high shine finish on this one. So now the links are ready to put together. I'm just going to feed a jump ring through the hole that I made in the end of that link and then through the hole in the next link. And once that's closed up, my bracelet's made. I quite like the look of these two centimetre long links, but don't forget you can experiment with the length. So let's move on to the wrap bead link. For this, I'm using 0.4mm diameter copper wire, which is 26 gauge, but you could use 0.6mm diameter, or even some twisted wire looks good. I've got some beads here, I think they're about 6mm and 8mm, but again, you could try different sizes, and some jump rings just to link them together. And the tools needed are round nose pliers, wire cutters, and flat nose pliers would be useful. So I'm going to start by showing you the wrap on one bead. So I've got my 8mm bead here and a short piece of wire. You shouldn't need more than about 10cm, this might be a little bit longer. And I've pre-oxidised the wire. So I'm just going to thread the bead onto the wire so it's about in the middle. And then I'll bend that wire over 
and I want to make a small loop in the end. I'm then going to cross that tail wire over the top of the rest of the wire. Now normally I'd carry on using that bit of wire to lock everything in, but it's a little bit easier to understand where they're going if I just leave it there at the moment. I'm then going to turn this around. Notice I haven't turned it over, just around. Make an angle in the other side and then turn a loop that side. But this time I'm putting the wire underneath. So you've got the two tail wires coming out in opposite directions and one's going over the top of the centre wire and the other one's going underneath. I'm then going to take that around that wire so it's made about a full loop. And I'll turn around and I'll complete the other side as well. That should lock everything into place then. And then what I need to do is take those wires around the side of the bead and as that's coming from the back I want it to end up at the front as I reach the loop on the other side. I'm then going to take that around that loop. I won't finish that off at the moment but let's do the other side. So in exactly the same way I'm just going to curve that around the side and this time that will go around the back of the loop. And just to lock everything together, I'm going to take that tail around twice. I know I don't need to make any adjustments now, so I can cut the excess off of that one. And then finish off the other side in the same way, just taking that tail twice around the base of the loop. And trimming the excess. And that's the single bead ready to link into a chain. Now we've got the basic idea, I'll show you how it works with three beads. I've got a piece of wire as before, and I'm just going to make the loop in one end as I did previously. I'm taking this over the top of the centre, and then around. Just lock that in place. I'm doing this without the beads on, just so that they don't fall off whilst I'm showing this to camera. I can then thread on the beads and then turn this around to make the loop in the other end. Now the one thing that helps when you've got three beads, if you just leave a gap of a millimetre and a half to two millimetres, just so there's a bit of free play where the beads are. This is because we're going to wrap between the beads as we go down. This wire is coming from the back, so I'm just going to take that first bead and I'll hold that bead, take the wire around the side of the bead, and then one circle between the beads, so the wire is ending up on the same side. And then do that again with each bead moving along. I can then turn the link around and wrap the other side in the same way. In this way you get little crossovers in between the beads. And then to finish I'm just going to take those ends twice around the loops again. Now because you've been twisting the wires around in circles everything might be a little bit twisted up. So you can just take care to straighten the loops and make sure those side wraps are where you want them. If they're not quite central on the bead, you can just push them into place. And this is what the finished link looks like. And then all I'm going to do with these links is join them together with jump rings. And finish my bead linked bracelet. Now you might notice in this bracelet one of the links has got beads of different sizes. They don't all have to be the same size. And finally, I'll show you the double link. For this, I'm using 0.9mm diameter wire, which is 19 gauge. You could probably go down to 0.8mm wire and maybe up as high as 1.25mm if you wanted a larger, more substantial link. 
and I've got some jump rings to link them together. And for this link, the tools needed are wire cutters, bail making pliers and a hammer and block. So I've cut a piece of the wire that's three centimetres long. And as the name implies, we need two pieces of wire for each link. So I'm going to use my first bit of wire as a guide and cut the second wire to the same length. I'll then take one of these wires and make a loop on the end with the smallest step on my bail making pliers. I'm then going to turn it around and make a loop the other end and this wants to be on the same side as the first loop. So they're both facing in the same direction. I'm then going to put that back into my bail making pliers on the second largest step and I'm just going to bend it around so you've got a little curve in the centre of that wire. And I want to do exactly the same with the second piece of wire to make them both the same shape. I then want to work hard on these two pieces of wire. I like to flatten the wire a bit so I'm just going to use my ordinary flat faced hammer. And I just want to hammer over the whole link. And I'll do exactly the same for the other piece of wire. You might find whilst hammering the loops have just expanded a little bit, so it might be worth just closing them back up again. And then this is ready to put together. And the two wires will be facing each other so that curve in the middle makes a kind of marquee shape. Now I could attach them with just one on top of the other, but I quite like to intertwine them a little bit. So one of the wires is on top at one end and the other wires on top at the other end. This might force those loops apart a little bit, so I tend to just squeeze them together. And then to lock them into place, I'll use the jump rings. So I'll thread the jump ring through both loops at one end. And then I'm going to attach it to the chain that I've already been making. So I'll put the two free loops of the last chain link on the same jump ring. You need to make sure those wires are crossing over as you add that link. So this is what the plain chain will look like. The other way you can fix this chain together is by using a loop on a bead link. These are open loops so I can just open it up, add those two loops on the link and then close that loop back up again. So I've made the necklace with the linked chain and those links also sitting between the beads. So that's three different links to use in chain or as components in your jewellery. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please press the like button below. Don't forget you can subscribe to my channel and head over to my website for more hints, tips and projects. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.